Good morning and thank you for being with us. We begin our program this morning talking about the future of our state. What is it about Connecticut that makes it so special? and what needs to improve to keep residents here, current residents, and bring in some new ones, fostering communities that will keep our kids from moving away, drawing those living out of state in. The research is in, and the Connecticut Business and Industry Association President and CEO, Christy Pentima, is here to share some of the takeaways and what comes next. Thank you for being with us, Chris. Oh, thanks for having me on. So tell me about this. This was put together. You're holding the report. It's called Opportunity Connecticut. It was put together by the CBIA Foundation. Tell me what that is and what this report is designed to do. Yeah, the CBIA Foundation for Economic Growth and Opportunity is the formal name of the foundation that we created about a year ago. And its sole mission and focus is to develop a long-term economic roadmap for the state of Connecticut, something that transcends administration, transcends election cycles, and, and puts out basically a goal line and the recommendations for Connecticut's future. Uh, we held 30 forums across the state with a variety of stakeholders, nonprofits, for-profits, educators, legislators, policymakers. Uh, we also looked at about 25 prior research and studies that were done since 2018. We hired a consulting firm who's done this kind of work in 30 other states. And the end product right now is this economic roadmap called Opportunity Connecticut, which will be the first of many iterations of recommendations for where the state should go. All right, let me start with two things that people might, uh, you know, as they hear this, they might think it doesn't apply to them. First of all, business and industries in your name. So somebody sitting at home says, I don't own a business. I'm not, you know, in management at some company. I don't care, Chris. But does this matter to just anyone? It matters to all residents. And, and that was the, really the intent with this in mind was, how do we create opportunity for all residents? And opportunity comes in a lot of forms. Your first taste of success, your first job, your first opportunity to buy a home or apartment, your first car. And when you look at those opportunities, it's usually associated with economic growth. It's, it's the opportunity because I got a job and so I have income now and I could do something with it. I could start a family, I could put my kids through college if I want to. So that's really, the residents were in mind with, this, with these solutions is how do we create more opportunities for our current residents and those who will be here in the future so that they can prosper and grow here in and I know one of the things, you know, looking at both the press release and looking at the report was that you tried to have actionable things because sometimes people's eyes glaze over when they hear report and you mentioned it. It's got 25 other reports from in the last, what, six, seven years that are in there. So a lot of people doing reports, Chris, but what, what did you hope to have this one do that was different? Yeah, the way this is different and the way the foundation is different is the prior studies that we analyzed and the ones that have been done in Connecticut year after year. It's a group of people that come together, they convene. No one owns the report. The report goes on a shelf and collects dust. There's really no implementation. As I said, we created this foundation for the sole purpose of dedicated resources, dedicated staff that will be focused on this all the time to help implement it, but also to update it. That was the other challenge with the prior studies that we've done. They were done at a time, you know, snapshot in time. And, and time changes. The economy changes, people's careers changes, the people, opportunities in Connecticut changes, demographics change. Uh, and so this is meant to be not the end plan, but really the start of it, something that will constantly refresh. We'll have metrics on our, on our website, and we'll, we'll update it on a regular basis. All right, let's take, uh, take a look through some of the bullet points. You kind of broke it into different areas, and the first one was business climate, um, how to be more business friendly, how to attract companies. And, and the three big things I got, and you can tell me if these are your bullets, were taxes, permitting, and red tape. Does that sound about right, yeah, what the feedback was? We, so w what is it in that area that, that we need to change? Yeah, the, the, one of the most interesting things about the business climate is when you look at studies that other states are doing, very similar studies, workforce and education has been the, the top thing for those states. In Connecticut, it was business climate. It was the over-regulatory environment that we have here, and it wasn't just from businesses. Hearing from teachers, the way they're regulated and measured, and how it's disconnected from what the business community wants and where career opportunities that their students should be going to. Hearing from nonprofits about how they're regulated. Hearing from state agencies about regulations that are, are handcuffing them and their performance as well. So regulatory really cut across everything, and it ended up being the, the biggest thing here. The interesting thing is on the regulatory front, there's a lot we can do that doesn't cost the state money. There's not a fiscal note attached to it. But that's always a challenge when you go sure. to implementation is do we have money? Do we the state has money? Do the resources there? On the regulatory piece, we're just such an old state that we continue to layer on regulation after regulation. So some of our recommendations are use AI to look at the regulatory statutes that we have in the state, like other states like Ohio have done, and can you pare down those regulations? Look at what regulations are out of date and costing people money. 
Um, so that's, that's a big piece of the business climate. The other piece in there is the messaging. There are some great things that are happening in Connecticut. Our fiscal guardrails are great. Uh, and one of the things we're doing here is helping with that messaging. We launched the coolest thing made in Connecticut, which is this manufacturing showcase about products made in Connecticut. We're doing a manufacturing bus tour in October going around the state to highlight manufacturing. So there are some great things that are going on. We need to really highlight them. One thing in workforce, uh, which is another big category, is, and I thought it was interesting, and you can tell me, it seems like kind of a Connecticut thing, the aging workforce, that, that a lot of the people who are doing a lot of these jobs are starting to tiptoe, if not run, towards retirement, right? Yeah, we had an aging force before the pandemic as well. The pandemic accelerated because people started retiring at maybe 62 instead of 65, 67. <clears throat> we have one of the older workforces in Connecticut. And so we have a lot of recommendations there about how do we attract people to say, how do we keep people in Connecticut, but also moving away from this, and we've had this legacy in Connecticut, this college robust mentality. We're a highly educated state. We have incredible college system and higher ed systems. And that's great for, for some people, a lot of people, quite honestly, but one third of our public high school students who graduate each year, about 12,000, don't go on a two or four year college or the military. And if we don't have the right pathways while they're in high school for them to have employment opportunities when they graduate, these folks are left behind. We've got a little over a minute left. I want to sneak two more things in here. Quality of life, th that's a strong suit for Connecticut. The, the environment, the shore, the Litchfield Hills, things like that, the access to New York and Boston. Like you said, the education and the workforce that's here. But there's still some stuff, housing and some of that last mile transportation. Minute left, Chris, those are big issues. Those are big issues, and we intentionally named it quality of life. Because when we held these forms, the first thing everyone said was, Connecticut has great quality of life. Connecticut has great quality of life. And you just hit on a bunch of them. But there are still some challenges in that quality of life. You want to have great quality of life, you need a child care system that's accessible and affordable. You need housing that's affordable. You need a transportation system that can move people around the state. You need an energy that's affordable, and we don't know energy costs have been up. And so we named that quality of life. There's a lot of recommendations in there specific to making the quality of life better for our residents. 30 seconds. What are the next steps? The next steps is we'll be broadcasting this and socializing this you know, throughout the state. Uh, and then as the session comes this January, there are some recommendations here, here that are very short term that we'll be putting in front of our policymakers. Well, listen, I looked at it. It's not one of these wonky things that you have to be you know, a lobbyist or a legislator to want to look at. There's a lot of good ideas in there. Um, we're going to about to tell people how they can look at it for themselves. But a lot of interesting stuff to think about, whether you agree or disagree. It's going to make you think a little bit about our state and how to make it better. We appreciate you being here. Chris Stephen Tima from CBIA, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me on. And here's how you can get that report if you'd like to go to cbia.com foundation. We'll also have a link on our website, wfsb.com.